Hey you guys, um, today we're going to do a review of the Pythagorean Theorem. It's really important. It's used in a lot of geometry concepts. It's all over the SAT, so let's get started. The Pythagorean Theorem states that in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And the formula or the equation here is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I have this beautiful right triangle drawn for you. Um, I'm going to call this A and this B. These are the legs of the right triangle. Um, they're interchangeable. It doesn't really matter which leg is A and which leg is B. All right, the side that is directly across from the right angle is C. That is your hypotenuse. And your hypotenuse is always the longest side. Okay, um, and again, I want to emphasize that you can only use the Pythagorean theorem in a right triangle, all right? Um, another definition I want to talk about is a Pythagorean triple. I put this in my own words. It's just a set of three numbers or three side links, and they satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. And all that means is if I take those three numbers and I plug them in to a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I get a true statement. The side on the left is indeed equivalent to the side on the right. It's just really important to remember that the biggest number is what you plug in for c. So you've got to remember to plug in the greatest number for c. Super important. All right, so a couple little notes to help you do these problems. Um, the first thing is if there isn't a picture given or there's not a triangle, you may wanna draw one. It's extremely helpful, especially if it's a kooky word problem, um, I always draw a picture. Um, you plug in the information that they give you into the Pythagorean theorem. So again, the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Just like when you solve any kind of equation to isolate the variable, you use inverse operations. To undo addition, you subtract. And then to undo a square, so for example, x squared, to undo that, you take the square root. And always remember what you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other. It is the math commandment. So let's do some examples. All right, so our first example says, could a triangle with side lengths four, five, and three be a right triangle? Could you be a right triangle if your side lengths are three, four, five, four, five, three? All right, so the first thing I do with a question like this is I find the biggest number, boom. That has got to be my C. Now the four and the three could be A or B. It doesn't matter which is which. I'm just gonna say that's A, that's B. So I'm gonna write the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. For A, I'm gonna plug in four, so four squared. For B, I'm gonna plug in three. And then for C, I'm gonna plug in five. And then four squared is just four times four. Four times four is 16. Three squared is three times three, which is nine. Five squared is five times five, which is 25. 16 plus nine is 25. So look. Does 25 equal 25? Indeed it does. So could that be a right triangle? It is totally a right triangle. So yes, a right triangle. Boom shakalaka. Let's look at another one like that. It says, could a triangle with sides six, 11, and eight be a right triangle? So what do we do first? We find the biggest number, 11. So that has got to be my C. I'm gonna let that be A and that be B. And remember, doesn't matter which one you use for which leg. Write the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. For A, I'm gonna plug in six. For B, we'll plug in eight. And for C, we plug in 11 because 11 was the greatest number. C is the greatest number, the hypotenuse is the longest side. If it is a right triangle. So six squared is 36 because six times six is 36. Eight squared is eight times eight, which is 64. 11 squared is 11 times 11, which is 121. 36 plus 64 is 100. 
and 100 is not the same as 121. So is this the right triangle? No, not a right triangle. Boom. All right, let's look at this example. It says to find X. So I have a right triangle. Now we have to ask ourselves, are we missing the hypotenuse or are we missing a leg? And I see that this X is located directly across from that right angle. That means I'm missing C. I'm missing the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna write A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It doesn't matter which one I use for A or B, I'm gonna let A be 10, B be 13, and C is X. 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100. 13 squared is 13 times 13, which is 169. All right, I can simplify this by adding 100 plus 169, which is 269. All right, I wanna get X by itself, so to get rid of that square, I take the square root, like we put in our notes, and that'll cancel. All right, I'm gonna get out my handy dandy calculator. I'm gonna type in the square roots of 269. All right, and I get 16.4012, yada, yada. I'm gonna round to the tenths place, so that would be about 16.4. And that's it. Let's look at another example. All right, for the next one, they didn't give us a picture, but they used B, C, and A. So that's not so bad. I don't really need a picture for that. So I'm gonna write my Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. There's no question about what I plug in for what because it's labeled it for me. So A squared. For B, I'm gonna plug in 12. And for C, I plug in 20. And simplify. 12 squared is 12 times 12, which is 144. And 20 squared is 20 times 20, which is 400. Now this time, I've gotta get this variable by itself, and we've added 144, so to undo that, I'm going to subtract 144. Bring down your A squared, 400 minus 144 is 256. To get rid of the square, we take the square root of both sides, that'll cancel. And the square root of 256 is 16. Beautiful. And we're done. Now let's do a word problem because those are my favorites. All right, a telephone pole support cable attaches to the pole 20 feet high. So let's go ahead and get started with this picture. So I got a telephone pole, no making fun of my drawing. Eh. I think it's got like one of these little things across the top here. All right, it's 20 feet tall. If the cable is 25 feet long, how far from the bottom of the pole does the cable attach to the ground? Oops, sorry about that. So let me draw a little grass. Here's the ground. All right, and the pole is attached from the top to the ground, and it tells me that this cable, I'm sorry, the cable is attached from the top of the pole to the ground, and it says the cable is 25 feet, and they're asking me how far from the bottom to the cable is it? So this is what I don't know. You can call it whatever you want. But I see this right triangle. This is my hypotenuse because here's my right angle right here. So this is a leg. So I'm missing a leg. So I'm just gonna call it B since I know it's a leg. So I'll come over here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. One of my legs is 20. The other leg is, I don't know, and the hypotenuse, or C, is 25. All right, let's do a little math here. 20 squared is 20 times 20, which is 400. And 25 squared is 25 times 25, which is 625. Um, I have the 400 being added to the B squared, and since I wanna get this by itself, I'm gonna subtract it, inverse operations. That'll cancel and I get B squared is equal to 225. B still not by itself, it's got that square to get rid of it. I take the square roots, and I realized when we solved these in algebra, you, you, the answer could be positive 15 or negative 15, but we're talking about a measurement, and that's not going to be a negative number, so it's 
positive 15 and our measurement or our unit is in feet. So that cable is 15 feet away from the bottom of the pole. All right, let's do another one. One more, people. Says a ladder, a 17 foot ladder rather, is leaned against a house. All right, let's have an orange house, cause why not? So here's my house, the roof. <laughs> we got a ladder leaned up against there. All right, and it says that the ladder is 17 feet. So here's my ladder, it's 17 feet. All right, and obviously there's some ground there or your house will be floating in the air. All right, it says the bottom of the ladder is eight feet from the house. So that means the distance from the bottom of this ladder to the edge of my house is eight feet. How high up the side of the house does the top of the ladder reach? So I'm looking for this distance right here. All right, here's my right triangle. Here's the right angle, my 90 degree angle. So I have the hypotenuse, the side located across from the right angle. This is a leg, so I'm missing a leg again, and I'm gonna call it A. So I'm gonna write the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. For A, I don't know. For B, I'm gonna plug in eight. And for C, I'm gonna plug in 17. All right, let's simplify. Eight squared is eight times eight, which is 64. 17 squared is 17 times 17, which is 289. To get the A by itself, I've got, get, got to get rid of this plus 64, so I'm gonna subtract 64 from both sides. And bring down your A squared. So four minus, I'm sorry, nine minus four is five, eight minus six is two, so that's 225 again. Hey, what a coincidence. To get rid of the square, you take the square root, those will cancel, and again we get A is 15, and it's also in feet. So that means this is reaching 15 feet up the side of the house. All right, that's it you guys, have an awesome day.